Hello everyone, welcome to the Country Unlocked podcast. And today I'm here with a marvellous postie who literally is the way of positivity in a community. So I've got Paul Cameron's here for me today. And I've also got Robert, who Paul has done such a lovely thing for. So, hello, gentlemen. Nice to meet Nice to see you today. So, the first thing I want to ask you is, how did you guys meet, essentially? Hi, Lauren. It's Paul. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been Robin's postman now, Lauren, for maybe possibly three years. Uh, and obviously this time last year, we started it with a pandemic. Yeah. Um, and I've always been aware that Robin is vulnerable with his health uh, and his needs. Um, so this time last year, I knocked on his door and asked him if he needed any help in anything with shopping or medication. Um, so, and it's just gone from there, really. Um, we've had lots of contact. Um, I've taken shopping round for him. I've you also go round for Sunday roasts. Yes, he, I've had, yes. He's been round for Sunday roast a couple of times um, and he's also been round to watch football as well, Lauren. He likes Arsenal for his sins. Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh, well, somebody has to be here. <laughs> I like Burnley. Yes. Talk of Burnley. I've just spoken to his sister before we came on this interview. Okay. Apparently, he used to do refereeing. I did do refereeing, yes. And you were one of the top referees for the team of some sort of... I was... uh, I I qualified as a referee at 14 years old. Um, And I became the youngest referee in Lancashire at that time. Um, and that was all through my dad and my uncles both refereeing. Um, and it, I did it for quite a few years and then I started playing football, Lauren. So, yeah, it's just been, you know, that side of it up there all them years ago was good and exciting, you know, at 14. Um, <laughs> but I've had plenty of excitement looking after Robin, I'll tell you. <laughs> you, you play football together. No, I no, we didn't play football together. No, I played football up in Burnley and uh, No. I mean, do you two play football together now? No. So you've not had a kick about in the garden? No, unfortunately not. No, no. No. So Robin. Hello, that's me. So what I wanted to ask you was how was it for you having such a nice postman like Paul offer to do all these nice things for you? Because you must have been struggling, I assume. Hi, Lauren and Paul. Uh, Hi, it's Robin. Um, Well, four and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer and given a year to live. Um, And I live in a flat on my own in Swindon. And I'd seen Paul two or three times a week walk by my house. I might have been washing my car or something. And then a year ago, when the lockdown started, he knocked on my door and said, can I help you? Uh, Do you need any, uh, any support? Um, because he knew I was on my own in Swindon. I don't have family here. And uh, I thought, what's this bloke want from me? What's his angle? 
because he just, out of the kindness of his heart, he knocked on my door, you know, in my flat in Swindon. And that's how our relationship started. Um, and I've seen him several times a week since then. Uh, he's done my shopping, like he said, and he's gone out and, you know, got my medication. And in October last year, I had a mini stroke and I was very poorly in the morning. And I phoned Paul and he came round to my flat and got me an ambulance to Great Western. So in my eyes, he saved my life. Uh, the, the, the mental side, uh, obviously living on my own and being in lockdown, it, it's been very challenging. I have some friends in Swindon, but they have obviously their families, their children, and, you know, their things to deal with. But Paul put out the hand of friendship. I mean, I call him Mr. Humility on Legs because he comes in and chats to me and my mental health, uh, maybe once uh, a week at least, is not the best because of my health, my condition, and I do struggle some days. And he's there to brighten my day. You know, he pulls my leg and we talk about football and we chat. And he's just such a kind person. Uh, and I can't thank him enough. You know, he saved my life. I mean, how can you repay somebody with your own life? <laughs> you know, it's very special to me. I know. God, you can never repay him for like saving your life no because you may not have been here to do this interview but what i do want to ask Paul about is mr community champion <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yes so lauren uh unbeknown uh, unbeknown to me um obviously because the way i'd been caring for the want of a better word with robin he contacted the local mp uh the qc robert buckland um just really for him to get somebody to thank me from the community um and then on the 18th of september uh, Mr. Buckland turned up at West Swindon, at the Royal Mail Depot at West Swindon, uh, with Robin to present me with a community champion certificate and an award. Um, and since then, Lauren, uh, lots of things have happened. Um, you know, and I think Robin will probably tell you a little bit better than me, but he just wanted to thank me for everything, you know, that I'd done up to, up to then. Um, but in my eyes, you know, I go past his door every day. I can pop in, I can see him, check on him. Um, so, you know, for me, there was no thank you needed. But, you know, um, it was so special. It was so special for the QC to turn up and Robin. I think it's so nice that you two found a friendship or for a man in modern day terms because even though you are of a different generation Robin can teach you stuff about life and you can teach Robin things about life that he might not have known um, I, th so I think go on, I think in that respect Lauren I think uh, there's not much I can teach, Robin. Um, he's a very worldly wise chap, but I think the thing that I do bring to him and do bring to the party for him, like he just said, is improving his mental health on a on a weekly basis. You know, just by popping in for a cup of tea, a chat, pull his leg about football, you know. Um, and like I said, just, just generally keeping his spirits up because it's difficult. You know, when you're on your own, you'll know as well as anybody, you know, when you're on your own and you, you, you're you locked in there. Yeah. There's no, there's no fun. Like, when you're on your own, I do become a right miserable B-Rad. <laughs> but then I have people that cheer me up. Yeah. 
as well. And doing interviews like this yeah. helps me inspire people. I want people to be inspired by your story. The friendship that the both of you have built yeah. together through Paul's very kind and tremendous act. Literally, if I had a hat, I'd take off to both of you for what oh. you've done over this lockdown. He was pretty poor. But also, Robin, well done for dealing with lockdown in the way that you've done, personally. Thank you. Well, I, um, a Wednesday is my birthday and I'm going to be 70. And obviously without Paul, I might not have made it. So another birthday I can put down to Paul. But going back to his award, um, basically I just emailed Robert and said, can you thank Paul for looking after me? And then we got on television, ITV, BBC. Uh, he was a champion um, at Christmas time. And it's just yeah. a way of me saying thank you because I can't thank him enough. And... Uh, it's led on to other opportunities uh, for Paul. And he deserves as much thanks as I can give him. And, you know, I did go to Swindon Council a couple of years ago about mental health, and they wanted to give me an appointment in six months' time. But I wanted the help now. So Paul knocking on my door, you know, a few times a week and popping in once a week or twice a week, I've got that mental health support that I need. And uh, I call him my sec security blanket. That's the way I would describe him. I feel safe on my own, knowing Paul's walking by my door every day. Oh, that is so sweet. So thank you. Touching. So and Lauren... The only, the only thank you I ever need from Robin is just to make sure I see his smiley face every day when I walk past there or I see him. That's the only thanks I need. Well, talk, talking of... <laughs> you had to get that photo. <laughs> so Ro Robin printed the photo off for me and framed it. Um, but that's that's the certificate in there, Lauren, if you can see it. I don't know yeah. if you can see it. I did my research. Yo! I, <laughs> You've I been found, cheating. <laughs> I found a lot of stuff. Let's see. I literally Googled everything. Watched the videos. I've listened to many radio interviews with for those of you who don't know, Paul's sister is actually one of my girls, little flow. So I've heard about your story from people close to both of you. Yeah. Um, and I assume there'll be a birthday cake delivered on. <laughs> When's your birthday? Or birthday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Birthday. 70. An old man. Um, you look 24, Bobby. Oh, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I assume there'll be a birthday cake and some sort of celebration. Yeah. I'm sure oh. there will be. Wednesday. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I think I, I think I might be able to find a little bit of time on Wednesday to pop round to see him, Lauren. I might yeah. just spare a couple. Might just spare him a couple of minutes, you know. Yeah. Now we're gonna swiftly move on to your other opportunities. 
<laughs> oh, here we go. What? One that includes, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention this, but I can cut it out. A TV presenter. Yes. So, um, like you said, since all this started, there's been many things <laughs> happening. Um, and I've been interviewed a couple of times with Royal Mail uh, about the story of me and Robin. Um, I've been in the Royal Mail newspaper and I've also been in the Swindon Advertiser with Robin. Um, and from the, from the following on of that, Lauren, um, the head oh. of communications uh, for Paul Smith, um, he contacted me and asked me if I would fancy being a Royal Mail TV presenter. Um, so with that, I said yes. I thought something different, a change. Uh, and... Two weeks ago, we had a Teams meeting interview, and I'm glad to say that I came through the interview, and I am now down to be a presenter for Royal Mail TV. Um, so very excited, very exciting. Um, I will send, if I can, I will send I will send you my video that I have just done last week. I'm, I'll see if I can send it through to you. Yeah, um, I've. I've already seen some of your <laughs> joke videos <laughs> on your family. Yes. What? She's a no she's a naughty sister, eh? Naughty <laughs> sister. I don't know what I do with that sister sometimes. But um yeah. Well done you. Yes, so I'm looking well, forward to that. I'm excited about that. We'll see what happens. So, with that job, will you be stopping being a postie? No, it's all part of it. It's all part of the deal. So, um, obviously, if they want, just for example, if they want me to go and interview somebody somewhere, um, they will give me a they'll give me a script, uh, and I'll go for maybe one, possibly two days on location, and then I come back to being a postman, whatever day you know I come back. Um, so, but what I'm going to do, Laurie, is I'm going to take a picture and everywhere I go, I'm going to take a picture of Robin Page with me, just so that I know that he's on location, location with me everywhere we go. <laughs> you should get a cardboard cutout. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what I've got him for his birthday on Wednesday, a cardboard cutout. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. I was thinking of getting one of his sister for me, but that failed. But it is lovely to see you two have such a nice friendship, and as they say, age is nothing but a number in friendship wise. And it's just lovely. To see in this day and age. Also, do you do your family know about your presenter job? I don't yeah. want to know like that today. Yeah, everybody knows about it. Brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> that stopped me from putting my foot in then. <laughs> <laughs> do I ever have it? I've put my foot in. Robin. So you're going to be 70 on Wednesday. I am, yeah. So, what are your plans for your 70th? Uh, I'm having lunch with a friend, but because of lockdown, there's not much else I can do. But after mm -hmm. lockdown ends, I'm going to see my brother up in Manchester and I'm going to take Paul and Kim out for lunch and spoil them and have some great fun after the lockdown on the 17th of May. Totally agree. Totally agree, because my birthday's this month too, and I'm doing a virtual thing. So we've just got to plan, but the only... Yeah. Reason we can plan is if people 
stick to the rules. Yes. Um, so what would you two say to people who are thinking about knocking on people's doors but don't have the courage to? Lauren, I think it's I, I think it's a wonderful thing to just knock on somebody's door. Um, I know it probably comes across a bit easier for me because I am a postman and I do that every day. Um, but just, you know, even people in your local community, just knock on their door, you know, do the social distancing and just say hello. Just, you know, a, a simple hello, how are you, can go a long, long way, I think. Um, I think Robin will probably agree with that more than anybody. Um, you know, it, it, it makes such a difference in the community um, just to speak to people, even people just walking past you on the street, you know, if you're out there or just, hello, how are you, and, and move on. You don't have to spend 20 minutes asking them the ins and outs of what they've done, where they've been and how they are, just, you know, because these people could still be stuck in their own homes as well on lockdown, you know, and, yeah, I, I would like to say something, please, Lauren, that um, on the matter. Okay. Um, in my eyes and my experience in life, in my later years, asking help is a strength and not a weakness. Oh. In the 50s and 60s, when I was a young man, you know, men don't cry. You don't ask for help. It's a weakness. But I've learned over the years that it's strength to ask for help. We're not yeah. on this planet on our own. There's wonderful people like Paul to help us. Okay. Do you think I agree. have the strength to ask for help? I agree. You there because there's a big... You've got the pandemic. And then you've got the mental health side. Yes. With that. Now I'm not going to lie to you. At the beginning of this pandemic, I was feeling pretty rubbish. And I went to ask for help. But the amount of people that did the stigma for, especially, yeah. I'm sorry to stereotype you. But especially in the male gender, it's got a bit easier now, but there still is a stereotype there. And coming from you, Robin, and your ladies, I do think people will listen. So, in the words of Robin Page, Ask for help. You're not alone. Yeah. And I think when I upload this, I'm going to put some helplines underneath the description of this so people can get the help they need. Yeah. Wonderful. I yeah. think that mental health should be a more open topic. And I think the government, this is getting political up, I think that the government should put more money into not just youth mental health, but mental health for the older person. What do you think? Well, I, I found over the years that self-help groups are a wonderful thing, that if you have a group of people with the same issues and the same problems and they sit together and talk about their feelings and what they're going through in life, that can become very rewarding. I'm a great believer in self-help groups, like-minded people. So if you have mental health issues, you sit with other people, 
with the same issues and you talk about it. And then there's other things in life that you might need to talk to somebody about. So if you're all like-minded, it's just such a relief. And just talking about it is part of the healing process, in my opinion. That's where it begins, when you start talking and sharing. Do you, think you should write a book on... I've been told that many times. Robin's words of wisdom. Well... What do you think, Paul? Yeah, I think Robin's totally right there, Lauren. Oh. Um, he's, because of what he's experienced over the last few years with his health, um, I think that Robin has a great understanding of, you know, how to, how to get involved with talking to someone, sharing your views, like he says, like-minded views, to be able to improve his own mental health and, like you said, with his words of wisdom, help somebody else improve their mental yeah. state or how yeah. they're feeling. I do think you should release a book called Robin's Words of Wisdom. I mean, the funny side, I wouldn't go to Paul to ask about golf, but I would go to him to discuss and talk about football because he knows so much about it. So it's connecting to those like-minded people to get the answers you need to get better. Yeah. I mean, I would go to Paul's sister and ask about building a house, but I'd go to her to go for a Nutella, hey, Nutella hot chocolate. And GK Max, <laughs> which is very common, as both of you know. Yeah. Speaking of which, I could do with a little of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> you're letting all your secrets out now. So we wait for this. Okay, I drink. Yeah, it's very weird to think that we're going back to normal. Are you too scared of going back to normal? Uh, I don't think there'll be a normal, Lauren. I think everything will change. Um, because we've been in this pandemic now for so long, I think people's behaviours will change, behaviours towards each other will change. And the way that we go out, maybe in life, will change. You know, um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping on the on the good side of it that people will respect each other more, and they will learn to appreciate each other more. You know, as in, like I've just said, the, the simple good morning or hello or how are you is all it needs. Whether you go to a cafe, a pub. In the street, on the bus, is all it needs. Um, so I'm hoping when we come out of lockdown, which is going to be rather soon, we've all still got to be keep his heads screwed on, his feet on the ground firmly, and think about other people, not just ourselves. And what would you say to that, Robbie? Well, I love shopping, so I can't wait till the shop's open. A man after... My own heart. So like However, Robin... I think it's important to be, um, you know, wise. And if we're still asked to wear masks and social distance and wash hands, that just makes common sense to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got my mask here. I always carry it around. Well done. With me. Always. But thanks to you two for talking to me today. My pleasure. I've really loved talking to both of you, um, getting to know both of you a bit better from speaking to you personally. And thanks for inspiring me today. Good. 
That's, that's likewise. Really, that's yes, I agree, Robin. I agree. Just go yeah. inspiration. You are indeed. The stories I get from my sister about you, Lauren, you know, and vice versa. I'm sure you get them about me as well. But yeah. Well, you know. Well, I have to have a talk to your sister. Have yeah. Me. I'll see if I can get her to bring me a Nutella chocolate coffee round, eh? <laughs> Anyway, thanks for talking. To Thank me. you. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Bye bye. Bye, Paul. Bye, bye Robin. Bye, Lauren. Bye. Hang on. <laughs>